This is One on One. I'm pleased to introduce Mr. Richard Wolf, who is the author of Renegade, The Making of a President, also the executive editor of MSNBC.com, and also one of the political analysts you will see on a regular basis on MSNBC. How are you doing? I'm good. A bit tired, but I'm good. It's, a, it's getting to the end of the election, so everything's coming to a head, but um, great to be here. Thanks for having me, Steve. Good to have you. We should make it clear that we're doing this right, right before the 2012 presidential election. We'll be running this before and after as well. Um, let me ask you. We don't know, obviously, who's going to win this race. And, and it's funny. I wanted to ask this question either way, but maybe it does depend who wins. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing you'll take away from this election so far up until the week before is Biggest and does it thing. depend upon who wins as to what they answer that question no no uh, some things actually most things about an election you learn in hindsight uh, and actually that's why i wrote renegade from the last election i felt even as i was covering it there was so much that i wasn't seeing and that I could get a glimpse of and wanted to go back into and tr sort of unfold. Excuse me, I didn't do, I did a disservice. Renegade looks back at the 2008 presidential election. You had really unfettered access right, right. to the president and some of the key players there, I'm sorry. Right, and, and I, I covered the 2000 election, mostly covering Bush, 2004, mostly John Kerry, and then 2008, this weird new senator with a strange name and, and I covered him from start to finish for Newsweek magazine and and you know you do learn not the first time around but maybe the second or the third time around that that most of the story it's like an iceberg it's out of view and you know it's there you just don't really know the shape of it this cycle I, I, I have a gut feeling where I think the hidden story is I, I think the story is going to be driven by the economy and I think we kind of know that the economy is big, but what we're not focusing on is how economic attitudes have changed very rapidly in the last couple of months. You can see it in certain points of data, but everyone's so focused on the top of the iceberg, which is where, where today's polls are, or what someone said on TV yesterday, or the debates, mm. that they're missing the bigger trend underneath that. And the other piece of it is, is how voting is changing. People aren't voting just on election day anymore. They're voting for days and weeks before. That's gonna make election night very difficult for people in our business because we're used to getting exit polls and they're kind of reliable. Well, if you've got 20, 30% of a key state voting beforehand and those votes have to be counted mm. and they're not showing up to the election, you know, patterns of behavior are changing. They're changing in voting just as they are in TV and online and everywhere else. So, the bigger trends are things that we don't see until we kind of look back. And then there's all the inside juice and the gossip. That's, that's what we do in books, too. Let me uh, ask you this about President Obama. As we do this program, <clears throat> President Obama, whether he wins or loses, still the relevant question. Yep. The biggest misconception about Barack Obama that most people have that you would like to disabuse them of is... Uh, the biggest From thing, the access that you have. Yeah, yeah. The biggest thing is that uh, everyone feels that they know this guy, right? You know, he's out there all the time. You hear a lot from him, and that's intentional. And, and for people who like him, they feel there's this emotional connection. I guess there's an emotional connection the other way with the people who hate him. He is, though, an incredibly disciplined performer. And so the public persona that you see of him this is a big contrast with Bush. Public persona of, of Barack Obama is really strikingly different from the private person. Um, there are lots of things that you cannot do. You, ways of speaking, sense of humor, um, uh, flashes of emotion. And admittedly, with him, the flashes of emotion are not expressed in a kind of, he's not, these aren't Clintonian eruptions, but there's a whole, Pub, public aspect to him which is very tightly controlled and in private there's a normal person there with Bush and I got to know President Bush very well as well you know what the public and the private were the same mm. <laughs> what you saw in public I mean maybe he didn't you know speak with his mouth full while he was eating which he would do in private but there weren't that many differences 
it's different. It's just different for him. It's different because of his character. And I think, let's face it, it's different because he's the first African-American president. Let's talk about the, the cable wars. Um, a few years back, I spent a lot of time on MSNBC, yep. mostly with Joe Scarborough when he had the nighttime show mm -hmm. as a regular contributor. And um, I don't think it's changed uh, what I'm about to ask you. In fact, it's gotten more intense. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One of the things that strikes me, particularly in prime time, mm -hmm. is if you watch Fox News or you watch MSNBC, very predictable from my point of view mm -hmm. in terms of um, as, they're, as they're watching, we're watching some of the coverage of uh, Benghazi. Uh -huh. If you're watching Fox News and the coverage of it or it's per their perception of it, they, would, it was le they were leading with a lot of the criticism of the administration. On a lot of the MSNBC programs, it was not the lead program. Vice versa, the screw-ups on the Romney part went the other way. And, and on a regular basis, here's the question. It, it, point of view. Uh -huh. Is it clear that in prime time that not just the host but an entire program has a general point of view and, and that you're a part of that? Or is uh, that a too simplistic a view of it? Yeah, we, we strongly dispute the idea that we're kind of mirror images of each other, right? The two networks. The, the Fox and MSNBC are mirror images. Um, obviously, there are, there are different prisms on the world, but we actually, we passionately believe. At MSNBC. At MSNBC, <laughs> that we actually have a different approach to programming and to journalism. And... Um, and that's actually what our audience wants. It's not just something we think of ourselves. If you look at the research of the two different audiences, yeah, the most obvious thing is this ideological divide. Although, frankly, there's more people in the middle and overlap. I mean, there are people who watch both. They do exist. Um, I do. But Right. And you're not the only one. And I watch CNN. Right. So there is that. But we also, our audience expects us to come with the facts. They expect us to come with research. They expect us to come with the tools of journalism. And the shows that we have that are really successful are smart, deep dive shows. I, I defy anyone. You may not agree with Rachel Maddow, but her show is smart. She's she smart. She digs deep. And that is our model. When you look at the kind of shows we've launched recently, uh, Chris Hayes, Melissa Harris Perry at the weekends, you know. Just had Melissa here I, a couple weeks ago. She's brilliant. Right. I'm not. I, I, I'm, She's an academic. I'm a former print guy, and we would, you know, look, the print cliche about TV is that it's all superficial, cable even more so. And, and when you read the print reviews of cable TV, it's, very, it's really lazy to say, well, it's all superficial and it's all just a mirror image of each other. I think there is a model that suits Fox News and its audience, and it's actually more opinionated and less fact-based than our approach. And that's no disrespect to them. There are great journalists, great reporters I have huge respect for, and ratings. personal friends with, and great ratings too. That model suits their audience. Our audience wants smart and deep and fact-based they also want the point of view. And, and our point of view range is slightly bigger as well, right? You mentioned Joe Scarborough. That's one of our best shows. And, and you know, Morning Joe. Morning Joe has this range of opinion. What people love is that dynamic around the group. And the seriousness, the smarts that it brings to morning TV. So we, um, it's a bit more nuanced than that. And I think our audience gets mm. it. I do read a lot of, of the, the equivalence, and, and I think that underestimates why both networks have been successful in finding their formula. You've got to understand what your audience is looking for, and it's not just the opinion and the analysis and the commentary. Fair point. MSNBC.com, executive editor, describe for, as we do this program, again, it's only been about a month that you said, right. but in the new year, 2013, as this program will be seen, Big things ahead, describe it. Yes. That. Well, now, MSNBC was created many years ago, 16 years ago, as a joint venture. MS was Microsoft, NBC, uh, NBC. And uh, it started out as a joint venture a few years ago, several years ago, in fact. The, the two sides parted ways on TV. It took us until last summer 
to take control as NBC and MSNBC of what we do online. There was a very successful website called msnbc.com, general news site. It's now called nbcnews.com, which is a better reflection of what they are and what the site is and, and what NBC News is. That means for MSNBC, we get to create, I get to create a whole new space online in the, all digital platforms mm. um, that represents what we do on TV and speaks to the bigger community that, that um, considers us a part of who they are so we're building a home for them, and that's, that's a wonderful opportunity. It's like it's the 1990s, but I've learned all the lessons that there could be uh, from you know, search and from social networks. Uh, so building a new thing for a big media brand at this time is a, is a rare privilege. It's very exciting. Before I let you out of here, a documentary uh, coming out called uh, By the People. Talk about that. Well, by the people, right. by the people it was the uh, documentary of the 2008 campaign. Right. Uh, it's still you had a role there. Uh, I had a role there, and actually in uh, a similar documentary on HBO uh, on the Bush campaign in 2000 called Journeys with George. Right. You know, these behind-the-scenes documentaries are. Uh, that was his title, by the way. Um, <laughs> th these behind-the-scenes, you, you see these poor reporters. I was there. Uh, who are out there every day, it's, it's brutal. I mean, it's tough for the candidates, they've got to perform, journalists have to as well. It, it gives you an insight into this weird pressurized cabin that people stay in. Uh, what you see on air in the newspapers is a tiny fraction of that experience. It's great to share it. We appreciate you very much coming in. Uh, Richard Wolf, who is uh, the author of Renegade, The Making of a President, executive editor of MSNBC.com, a uh, regular contributor as a political analyst to MSNBC. Um, I want to wish you all the best and thank you for thank coming. Thank you. Thanks, all Steve. Best. This is one-on-one -on -one from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Stay with us. We'll be right back. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Medical Center, Berkeley College, TD Bank, Qualcare Inc., a local managed care company covering 750,000 New Jersey residents, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Verizon Communications, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger and NJ.com, everything Jersey. And by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.